<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name's James Mason. I'm also known as Ribs. I've got a cracked rib right now, so please don't make me laugh, okay? <laughs> Um, so this talk, um, it's predominantly how somebody non-technical has ended up on delivery in a supremely tech-led industry. Um, so I think it's, it's a little bit different. Um, so I want to talk you through that. Uh, a couple of caveats. Uh, because I work for Kinetic, all views are my own and not that of Kinetic or any previous employers. Uh, a couple of the wall stories I'm going to talk through in this, uh, they're Google images, they're not customer images. And uh, any war stories have been anonymized and have since honestly been remediated. A uh, little picture of uh, Fred Durst at the bottom there. Um, it's just to point out, as I did at B-Sides Lancashire, that uh, I've been attending B-Sides for, for 10 years now. The first one was London in a basement. Uh, they had like a, a creds wall of shame and loads of beer fridges that you ha had to hack your way into. Um, so to finally be talking at one, um, big thank you to B-Sides and uh, thank you to you guys for listening to this. <coughs> so uh, yeah, a couple of useless facts. Um, I'm genuinely up to seven or eight of my nine lives, um, so time is short. <laughs> um, bucket list stuff, uh, I always wanted to play poker in Vegas and my first ever game I somehow um, managed to end up on the final table against seasoned pros, sponsored players, uh, cowboys, <laughs> you name it. So that was pretty cool. And um, about 20 years ago, I once turned down a record deal. And um, yeah, I, I didn't think I cared about that until I wrote this slide deck. And then obviously it's, it's still up there, you know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so this guy... This was a picture of me in my early 30s, uh, just, just wondering, what am I doing? Uh, where's my career going? Um, so uh, I kind of thought, you know, uh, my transition into red teaming, was I a natural born red teamer or did this come from my sales background? And uh, I was thinking back to when I was, when I was a child and um, I remember my parents used to, in the old days, go to the bank. Wow. <laughs> um, and I used to sit there and I used to map out the CCTV cameras, uh, the entrances, the exits, what technology they had in place if you were going to rob it. Um, I was about seven years old <laughs> when I was doing this. So that, that got me thinking, you know, may maybe I was meant to do this. And to end up robbing banks legitimately as a job, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, second, uh, second one, uh, my dad reminded me of this one before I did my B-Size Lanks talk. Um, we were in SeaWorld, I was about 15 uh, in the 90s, um, back when we thought SeaWorld was cool. Um, I, I've, got, I've got an obsession with sharks, so we were in Terrors of the Deep, and this guided tour group walked through, they're all wearing lanyards, um, looked awesome, and being 15 I thought, <laughs> I, I want to go on this. So uh, I joined the group, I folded my arms just to lamely disguise that I didn't have a badge, um, asked a couple of questions just to validate that I'm part of this group. And then I joined the tour, and uh, little did I know this tour was half a day. So uh, I was 15, I spent half a day around the backdrops of SeaWorld. Uh, we were hand feeding sharks, um, access all areas when I was 15 years old, which is pretty cool. Um, I've, I've been many things. Uh, one time I was, I was a retail store manager. And uh, it was a it was a really quiet day, and it might have been boredom, it might have been curiosity, or, or probably a bit of both. Um, but this is a, a burglar alarm uh, motion sensor, um, and when it was quiet, I learned how to travel from one end of my store to the other without setting that thing off once. Um, and these things just started ticking. Was was I always meant to be in this role? You know. Uh, and the final final example there, that's a, a keypad uh, lock. Uh, again, I was a retail store manager. You tend to find these in less secure environments like retail, although uh, a lot of building companies use these. So if there's any building work going on with, with your target organization, this is a great way in. Um, they're usually a combination of four alphanumeric uh, uh, digits. Uh, if you know those four combinations, you can input them in any order and it still lets you in and, and that works to this day. Um, there's really easy ways of finding that out. Um, usually the keypad locks aren't as nice and shiny as this one. The numbers have worn away so you can tap that in, any number, turn the lock and it works. Um, some engagements, we've, we've literally put pencil lead on the keypad lock at night. 
come back and see the ones that have worn off. Again, you've got you've got the four combinations, uh, and we've used like uh, ultraviolet ink that we shine a light over it and see see which numbers have, have worn off. Um, many ways you can trick that system. Although this next video I recorded in April this year, and it was e even easier than that. I, I call this video "Secure by Design." I'll just let you uh, take that in. No, no, no. <laughs> so, um, yeah, my, my journey into information security, um, I applied for a role at a company called Kinetic. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, they're a global defense company. Um, their website was full of images of fighter planes, missiles. I had three interviews and they wouldn't tell me what the job was for. So by the time I sat the third interview in a highly secure site, I just wanted to get the job to find out what it was. Um, and, and luckily I did, and um, my, upon uh, gaining the role, I was told, your new job is going to be selling this elite team of hackers, and this was 10 years ago, I'd never heard of the term pen testing, I couldn't believe this was an actual job, and um, you couldn't talk about it at home, so it was like, damn. So uh, my, my second day with the company, day two, I was taken to a windowless room by uh, a couple of uh, industry legends, uh, Kinky John. A monstro. Um, I was shown how to pick locks. I was shown how to open a padlock with a can of coke. And they uh, they hacked a laptop that wasn't even turned on. <laughs> I, I felt about 12 years old and I was like, this is my new job. And from that day, as cheesy as it sounded, this is what I'd been looking for all those years. You know, this that day changed my life and I, I thank them to this day. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so... Um, I decided, uh, no offense to my sales colleagues, I was going to sit with a pen test team. Um, and I wanted to be there for the, the whoops and the hollers and the high fiving when they'd pwned another global organization. You know, this is happening on a daily basis. And, and I fed off of that. Um, it was a really, really close team, still is to this day. So uh, I guess back then I, I wanted part of this, but I didn't know how. You know, I'm, I'm non technical. These people to me were like godlike status. I, I could never be what they are. So, wh what is my route? You know, and I guess you could call it uh, imposter syndrome that is that is now referred to. Um, I had that for about a day, and then I thought this, this doesn't serve me well, so I'm I'm not, I'm not doing it. So um, I I seem to have a natural gift for for social engineering, and you know, utilizing my sales background, you deal with a lot of people, you build a lot of relationships, you know, and. Um, I kind of thought, is this a crazy leap, you know? But I've not heard of anybody else doing this. I've heard of some tech guys that have gone into a pre-sales role, but I've not heard it the other, other way around. So, um, yeah, all about team. Um, so my first official red team engagement with these guys, they'd been red teaming for 13 years at this point, and they had, they'd never shown their get-out-of-jail-free card. And it was about two minutes before my first gig, um, physically breaching an insurance company that I just thought it's going to be me isn't it <laughs> um, but it's now 2023 and I'm I'm proud that I share that record and I'm one of the most uh, experienced physical members of the team um, so it's all about team <laughs> so um, yeah as I mentioned I was thinking of possible links between sales red team and you know is it crazy and why haven't others done it and like you think of a snake oil salesman like this guy here who's clearly not me um, these, these type of guys, you know, they're manipulating the crowd to get the reward that they're after. Um, exactly what you do on a, on a physical gig. So I was like, d d there's clear links here. Um, so working for Kinetic, we're highly restricted of what we can talk about in public. So I've put a couple of sort of more fun, let's call it freelance uh, uh, examples, just so I could add some photos for you all. So um, to be on a physical red team, it takes dedication. Um, this was me changing my appearance. Um, I was, yeah, I kept that look for about five years, you know, just to mix it up a little bit. It wasn't a great look. Even my watch is bursting off my arm right there. Um, but these are the kind of lengths you go to when you're a social engineer. Um, this was me at a, at a movie premiere. Um, I don't know if you've ever attended one, but they tend to be steel fenced off. Uh, perimeter security teams, all entrance and exit points have full teams on them, really, really, really properly secure. 
Um, and with a face like mine, I, I don't often take selfies, but um, I stumbled upon uh, Ricky Gervais at the David Brent premiere, and uh, I took that selfie just to send it back to the guys to say, look what I'm up to. Um, to which one of them replied, oh, that's pretty cool. Is, is that your dad? <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, he had a point. <laughs> um, yeah, this was another movie premiere that, that I, I was wandering past. Um, the security at this one, as you would imagine, being the Beatles, absolutely top security. Um, high profile, high net worth individuals there. You can see Paul Ringo. Um, that photo in the middle is from the press pit. Um, I was stood next to this morning interviewing. Um, and uh, you obviously had Yoko Ono there, you had Liam Gallagher, Madonna, <laughs> Eric Clapton walked by me and I had to really keep my cool, you know. Um, but, uh, and there's me at the bottom uh, on, the, on the blue carpet getting my photo with a whacking great bag um, on the press backdrop that appeared in the press the next day. Um, that, that was pretty cool. So, um, yeah, but pen testers, but by your natures, you know, what you do, you think outside of the box, you break things, you know. Um, I contacted a couple of pen test firms prior to lockdown thinking, um, I'm done with sales now, I want, I want to red team. And I, I spoke to two or three, and um, I thought I stumbled upon something where I could uh, sell the engagement, I could deliver it, I could do the board presentation. Not one of the companies could see it. You, you're either sales with a target or your delivery with utilization. And it really shocked me that I was, I was like, but this is what pen testers do. Um, so the reason I put this slide in is, is um, when I've given this talk before, um, people have asked me questions, especially university students, that it takes persistence. Um, so, so bear with it. And I'm, I'm really proud now. This is exactly what I'm doing at Kinetic. I cover pre-sales, the sales cycle. Uh, I deliver the engagement. I do some OSINT um, and uh, manage the engagement. And I present to the board, you know, utilizing that sales background. So, um, yeah, big thank you to Kinetic for, for taking a punt and especially SHC for uh, bearing with me. Um, so a couple of real war stories now. They're, they're old enough to talk about these. They've honestly been remediated. Uh, and there's some guys in this crowd who are, who are on, on these gigs. So they know when I'm lying and exaggerating. So no pressure. Um, so the first one is a, a UK uh, retailer. And they just invested X million pound in their head, head office security. Um, and I think what they wanted was a, a tick box exercise that that's money well spent. You know, you've done a really good job. Uh, upon visiting this site, you know, it was evident money had been spent. There was 20 feet spiked fences. There were full security teams. There were guard dogs. It was really an intimidating uh, site if you were trying to breach it, which is great, great to see. Um, Target 2 was their distribution centers, which to a retailer are obviously almost equally or arguably more important. Uh, and our guys were told, uh, if you try and break into these sites... The, the security teams will be physically violent and then ask you questions after. So our guys, that's like red rag to a bull, you know. We definitely wanted to check these out, so that's exactly what we did. Um, our team got in on night one, um, booked out meeting rooms, ordered pizzas, uh, picked open filing cabinets, took photos of HR records and then picked them locked again so nobody ever knew it happened. And this company in particular sent an all-staff email after this engagement that uh, Kinetic sent ninjas in the night. And, and we, we were really proud of that, you know. That was customer's word, not just ours. Um, but the key point from this engagement was uh, when, when we breached the premises on night one, um, it was all a flat network. So, so all that investment in their head office sort of perimeter security it was like an outdated cybersecurity model where all the investment's been in, in the perimeter, but two miles down the road, you, you can access their network anyway. So that, that was quite an interesting one. Uh, the second one, um, we had a, a finance company that wanted us to simulate an insider threat. Um, they, sent, they sent a guy around to our team in a hotel around the corner, and this guy must have been apprentice age. He was about 18. He was visibly shaking, and we thought we've been set up to fail here. Um, so we spent time with this guy, um, talking him through what we wanted to do, why we were doing it, um, 
and we we might have privately took some bets that God we're going to get caught for once. Uh, he went back to his office and he was absolutely awesome. Like our guy said, they would have given him a job at the end of it. Um, he even left his laptop with us, which was a nice little bonus. Um, but I, I'm interested on the human side of things, and I'm thinking companies need to defend about uh, defend against malicious insiders. So if an employee goes rogue, whether they've been paid or blackmailed, what I saw from that that guy was uh, when you decide, you go in both feet first. You know, how do you defend that even with access control in an organisation? It's it's a hard thing when you have to give so much trust to your staff. So that that was super interesting from the the human element. Um, this one was uh, this was uh, a physical exercise. Um, we were given two days to breach a highly secure environment. It was one of the toughest gigs I've ever done. Um, and I said to them at the time, you know, if this was a real attacker, they would have recon this for weeks, maybe months. This is very much a smash and grab, you know, do you realize that? And again, their security was top notch. I think they wanted a tick box, you know, full clean report. Um, we were given a couple of goals, which was access their finance team on level top floor. Um, and do a USB drop in the premises. Um, and I had three scenarios planned. Uh, first one was uh, getting a, a read off a staff pass. Um, we had, uh, well, I hadn't used this Proxmark uh, tech since before lockdown. And while I was tailgating some of their staff to the nearest Tesco Express or the nearest bar, um, I suddenly realized the range on this thing is about five centimeters. So, uh, yeah, this, this wasn't going to work. In an ideal world, it's linked to an app on your phone and we would have been able to wave over the security barrier and walk straight in. Um, my second approach was uh, um, printing a, a fake pass. We had a lot of images of the guys wearing their passes in public. Um, we had to order a new uh, card printer because ours had died during lockdown. And we had two days on site and it was two days at Royal Mail were on strike, so that was completely out. And then, so... Third scenario, resorted to tailgating, which is kind of clumsy, but it works. And it was the day of the train strike, so there was barely any staff in. So um, I guess what I'm trying to say is on a red team, you have to be adaptable. You can do all the planning in the world, but you need to react and instantly adapt to what's in front of you. Um, I'll miss this one out. <laughs> and that one. Uh, and that so, uh, yeah, successful social net engineering, uh, four key points. I find um, the first one being confidence. You have to believe legitimately that you're meant to be in that building more than the person you're talking to. And it works. It genuinely works. Uh, manners, be polite. You know, manners are free. Um, I, I hope I like to treat people as I expect to be treated back. And in a social engineering environment, people help. It's, it's really nice. I get a pang of guilt when it's happening. But um, I kind of counteract that with, you'd rather it's me breaching your organization than some malicious bad guy. Uh, the third point I've already chatted through, it's instantly adapting to what's in front of you because stuff just changes. You can do all the planning in the world. And number four, um, we've never shown a get out of jail free card. Um, always have a convincing backup story, a legitimate reason for being there because the last thing in the world we want to do is show, show a get out of jail free card. Uh, so the conclusion, um, I beat myself where for too long, even though I didn't say it lasted that long, um, for not being technical. I really wanted to, to do this stuff, but um, these guard-like people, how could I ever be at their level? Um, but hopefully this talk has proved some noob like me can end up doing it and end up with uh, some pretty cool experiences. Uh, by being persistent, when I spoke to Pentest companies, they, they did not see this role. And I thought, oh, I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board, you know. But by being persistent, I kind of made it happen. Uh, make friends, sitting with SHC pen testers. You know, I've, I've worked for some of our competitors and I've done this wherever I've been. I've made friends with a pen test team and you can see their faces of like, why is this sales guy talking to me? Um, but I've got pen test friends from every company I've ever worked for, you know, and, and, and it's great. Uh, and finally, dedication. You know, I've been coming to B-Sides 10 years. I've been going to the DC meetups when I was a, a lowly sales guy. Um, I got well known that I was accepted as a pen tester. And even that, I was sat there as a sales guy. So, um, yeah, dedication and, and don't give up. So hopefully um, that's given you some, uh, some inspiration for anybody non-technical, which probably most of the audience are. 
Um, but yes, yeah, I'm Rips, and thank you for listening. <laughs> Question? So, um, never long enough. <laughs> um, we, we work with a customer to deliver exactly what they're looking for, and sometimes, like that example, they gave us two days to physically breach an organization that was really highly mature. Um, it's arguably not long enough, even though we did it. We got to the finance team. We USB dropped in their premises um, in literally within a day. Um, ideally, that's flying by the seat of your pants a little bit. Um, it, but it's it's a collaborative effort between us and the customer to, to make sure we're delivering what they want and what they need. What What's dangerous is... Um, you sh the customer should never game a red team because they don't want to look bad because they're not getting value out of an expensive exercise and um, even worse than that, they're getting a false sense of security that we've just passed this awesome red team, aren't we great? When, you know, anybody could be on their tiptoes for two days, it's what's the rest of the, rest of the year look like, you know? So I think that's, that's quite a dangerous approach. Um, I've been involved in red teams when you work with a small key stakeholder group as possible, that's the way it should work. And then um, when we've we found their emails, all staff emails saying we're having a red team next week. Um, so again, just compromising the whole exercise. Um, but as I say, we we do still get in, but that's not ideal. <laughs> Yeah, um, a lot of it is made up. Uh, when I did the USB drop at the last gig, um, I literally chose a, a London-based person on LinkedIn, went into their reception, and um, I said, I'm, I'm 45 minutes early for a meeting. Do you mind if I just wait on your sofas? Don't call him yet. Um, and their security team were really awesome. They interrogated me of who I'm meeting, why. Um, they were actually, the security team, team were on reception rather than receptionist. Um, they didn't take their eyes off me the entire time. I did the USB drop and faked a phone call and said, uh, oh, we're going to meet for lunch instead. Don't worry about it and made my exit. Um, so a lot of the time, as I say, you can do all the planning in the world, but it's it's when you're there, when, when the real work happens and it's being able to adapt uh, and change your story. But, you know, always having that to fall back on rather than showing you get a jail free card. Not at all. <laughs> no, so it, it suits some of our guys that, um, you know, who, like I say, are on a godlike level to me. Um, they could send somebody like me in to, to talk my way into a premises, plug a box in, and they can do the smart work from Malvern. Um, you know, some of them have had children, and the, the road life doesn't suit them as it used to. Again, send me in. They can work from home, you know, so it, it works as a genuine team effort. For me, yes, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm doing training at the moment. OSINT training, uh, Wi-Fi hacking. You know, stuff that you can combine with the physical for the first phases of a of a full spectrum red team. So um, I'm getting there. Um, but yeah, my skill is just uh, just getting in, talking to people, um, uh, and it's adrenaline fueled stuff, as you can imagine. Being in the premises, you're not supposed to be in. Um, and it's very highly addictive. I have to stop myself all the time. Airports with doors propped open. I'm like, what are you doing? Um, I have to stop myself all the time, you know, because I'd never go rogue, but it's very tempting. <laughs> Do you see um, any change in the community slash industry from our boys' point of view taking the role more seriously? Because it's, like, it's a niche. Within a, within a niche, within a niche. Yeah, yeah. Is that like, is that changing in the future? Yeah, so um, I've taken a lot of university questions at previous talks, uh, DTX Manchester, a couple of weeks ago. Ah, oh, cool. Um, and the guys there were speaking to me like, how do we get involved in the physical? Um, because pen testing is highly accredited, certified, check, crest, cyber scheme. <laughs> um, and all those people, red team in less so, NCSC are currently looking at it, and, and so are they working with those certifying bodies. 
but you know what, what's your exam for talking your way into a building so um when i spoke to these guys at manchester i said you're already more qualified than i am so what you need to do is work for a credible pen test company that are going to have red team show some passion show enthusiasm and those guys will take you under your wing and you've got the technical skills that's pretty awesome combine it you know because the, the phys- not all pen testers can red team or want to um so yeah it's 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 definitely niche i agree with you <laughs> Dogs? That's a good question. Um, usually they're on the lead. Um, but yeah, my overweight photo earlier, I, I lost a bit of timber so I could run a bit faster. But <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Definitely both. Um, yeah, each engagement I've got different crown jewels that we've we've established from the kickoff calls. Um, but definitely both. Um, we once we spent like a week in a premises that we shouldn't be in, we start getting a bit more flamboyant and a bit more ridiculous, just to think you really should be spotting us now. Um, and if we then questioned, you've got that gap analysis between you should have spotted us here. Um, I, I, I accessed a secure location once with a completely blank white pass, no writing, no photo, and I got in with it, you know, and that, that company needs to know that that's possible. Um, so it's a combination, definitely, um, and it's all fun. <laughs> Thank you very much, really appreciate it. Thank you.